hi and welcome back to your autism game plan. I'm Joya Vanderlaan, a family nurse practitioner, a functional medicine specialist, and an autism mom. Today we're going to be talking about inulin. Last week I taught you a little bit about inositol and I thought it would be helpful to do another eye supplement uh, right in a row so that we make sure we know there's a difference and they're not the same thing and we do not get them mixed up because they do very different things. Inulin is a prebiotic fiber, and by prebiotic fiber, what I think about first when I think prebiotic is it has to be there in order to feed the probiotics. So if we don't have good prebiotic um, supplements, uh, fibers in our diet, in our children's diets, then we're not going to have as healthy an intestinal environment, a mi microbiome, as we could because we're not feeding those good bugs or the probiotics with our prebiotics. Inulin can be helpful in certain cases um, in kids with autism. I wouldn't say inulin is one of my very first go-to really important staple supplements for children with autism. However, when there seems to be SIBO or that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or another dysbiosis, inulin can be really helpful. One of the common features among people with autism, children with autism, is that on their oat testing, the organic acid testing, they often have high levels of propionic acid. And I've talked about this before in another video. The propionic acid uh, is kind of a byproduct of a lot of the bacteria that are overgrowing. And so if there's propionic acid, there's very likely um, overgrowth of these bad bacteria. High levels of propionic acid can cause things like antisocial behavior, um, sensitivity to light and touch and sound, um, and some other things that are sometimes associated also with autism. And so it makes you wonder if some of the autistic symptoms um, maybe are related in some cases to gut dysbiosis or high levels of propionic acid. So where does inulin come in then? Well, inulin can actually help to feed the good bacteria in the gut, crowd out the bad bacteria that are causing inflammation and this propionic acid to be produced, thereby kind of decreasing levels of those things and then decreasing maybe the severity or even eliminating um, certain symptoms uh, altogether, so symptoms that are associated with high propionic acid, but also symptoms that are common in, in kids with autism. There are certain doctors out there treating autism specializing in autism who very often use inulin along with omega-3s, pretty high doses of omega-3s, to treat children with autism who struggle with um, speech. And so things like the Nemechek protocol, for instance, very often include inulin and high dose omega-3s. And there are lots of cases where kids really do make really good progress in their speech and uh, gaining more words and the ability to communicate verbally. So that's been really helpful for a lot of kids. You can find inulin in a lot of foods, and of course that's the preferred way to get most nutrients in, especially when we're not trying to give really high doses. Inulin is found in things like bananas, leeks, onions, garlic, asparagus, so if you can sneak any of those foods into your kids' diets or if they'll eat them willingly even better, those are the best ways to get inulin and other vitamins and nutrients into their body. Inulin is also found as a supplement um, because of its benefits on gut bacteria. It is also used more in grown-ups for this case, but um, to help with weight loss because it increases satiety or that feeling of fullness. And it also is used for um, preventing heart disease because it actually can lower cholesterol levels as well. So that's more for grown-up use. Um, for the kids, particularly kids with autism, we're typically using it more for gut health and the rebalancing of that gut microbiome. Now, one thing to watch out for if you do decide to start giving your child inulin is to watch for bloating, abdominal bloating or gassiness that they may experience. Some kids aren't ready for a full dose um, of inulin right off the bat. And so typically with all kids, what I recommend is starting low, go slow. So start with a lower dose, maybe an eighth or a quarter even of the recommended dose on whatever bottle you end up getting, and then increasing very slowly so that that your child's tolerance can build up. Sometimes if you start with a full dose, they'll have the gas and bloating, which will make you think this was not a good choice. However, it still could be beneficial. You just need to get them to be able to tolerate it. And so starting with a lower dose and gradually building up over the course of a couple weeks 
can really, really be the smartest way to do things. And that's the way it is with a lot of supplements, but particularly insulin to get their GI systems used to that prebiotic fiber. A couple other things to remember is that inulin cannot be part of the diet if your child has been recommended to go on a low FODMAP diet. Low FODMAP diets are low in prebiotic fibers on purpose. So if that's something that's, that your provider, one of your doctors or other providers has recommended to you, make sure you're not adding inulin um, without their approval um, and discussing it with them first. The other thing to understand about inulin is that since it's a prebiotic fiber, a fiber, characteristically a fiber, it absorbs fluid. And so when it's in the GI system, it will absorb fluid to kind of um, puff itself up. And that's part of the way that it works for constipation is by bulking up the stool. Uh, and there are other ways it works as well. But what we wanna remember is that if we're giving something to a child that's gonna absorb water in the intestines, we wanna make sure that the child is also drinking enough water so that the body doesn't get dehydrated at the expense of you know, it pu getting pulled into the colon. So if you're gonna give insulin, be aware of making sure your child is properly hydrated as well. Sometimes inulin can be used to treat constipation. Now I will say inulin is not my first go-to uh, when I experience a patient with constipation. However, sometimes if, it, if we know it's gonna be useful for other things as well, then we can kind of use a two birds, one stone um, theory and say, well, we, we know that there may be SIBO here or another intestinal overgrowth that we wanna help. And also the child's constipated maybe as a result of that overgrowth. And so let's use inulin maybe along with something like magnesium in order to kind of regulate the bowels. But again, it wouldn't be my first choice for constipation where constipation is one of the only issues. For that, I would choose more magnesium glycinate. You can check out my videos on that as well. Thanks for taking the time to watch today. I hope I've taught you something new and useful for you to be able to take control over your child's treatment plan and your child's autism game plan. We all need a little encouragement and empowerment sometimes, and that's one of my goals here is to um, give you useful, valuable information um, to help your child. As always, remember, be gentle with yourself. You're doing a great job.